With today's Gospel reading in Luke chapter 23, we come to the trial of Jesus before Pilate, then before Herod, and then before Pilate again. We are told that the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. The assembly would have included the chief priests, the elders, scribes, the whole council, and they're all united in their desire for Jesus' death. They cannot sentence Jesus to death, they haven't got the power, so they have to appeal to, to Pilate, the Roman governor. Pilate seems to be a more sympathetic character in the Gospels than historians at the time tell us. In the Gospels he's weak, yes, but he's not vindictive. He doesn't want to pass sentence of death on Jesus. He finds him not guilty of the charges laid against him. But he fears the menacing power of the crowd. And so in the end, hands Jesus over to be crucified in order to pacify them. Now Luke's gospel is the only one to tell us about the trial at Herod's palace. This Herod is Herod Antipas. The other Herod, known as Herod the Great, whom we know from the birth stories, is long dead. And after he died, his former territory was divided into three parts, and Herod Antipas ruled just Galilee. And this was a bitter disappointment to him because he'd been promised the whole kingdom by Herod the Great. And he was constantly asking the Romans to extend his territory. Well, he, along with thousands of Jews in the region, had come to Jerusalem for the Passover. And I can't help remembering Herod's song in the musical Jesus Christ Superstar, which captures quite brilliantly the attitude of some especially the cynics, towards Jesus. Herod sings, if you remember, Jesus, I am overjoyed to meet you face to face. You've been getting quite a name all around the place. Healing cripples, raising from the dead. And now I understand you're God. At least that's what you've said. Jesus, you just won't believe the hits you've made around here. You are all we talk about. You are the wonder of the year. So you are the Christ, you're the great Jesus Christ. Prove to me that you're divine, change my water into wine. Prove to me that you're no fool, walk across my swimming pool. Then when Jesus refuses to perform or even speak, Herod shouts, take him away, he's got nothing to say. Get out, you king of the Jews. So Herod sends Jesus back to Pilate and we have that intriguing sentence. In that same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. I find that idea chilling, as I do when modern day political leaders who've been enemies suddenly declare friendship for each other. The cynic in me doesn't want to trust this and I remain apprehensive. So perhaps the main point of this reflection today is what I'm coming to now. Some theologians say that when we read scripture, scripture is also reading us because it so often has an uncanny way of speaking directly into our lives. We can see mirrored our world and ourselves, our capacity for failure and fear. And I think this part of Jesus's passion speaks powerfully into our world today, today's reading. Jesus is powerless, pushed from pillar to post. He's a prisoner, humiliated, mocked, and later tortured before being put to death, an excruciating death. Those in our world today who are falsely accused, wrongly imprisoned, rendered helpless, homeless, and powerless through poverty and inequality, or through decisions made by remote bureaucrats in which they have no voice. These are the people who can most truly accompany Jesus and identify with his passion at a deep level. I was very moved by, and still can't stop thinking about, a young father who was interviewed on Panorama. 
He lives with his wife and young son, who's aged two or three. And this man has terminal cancer. He's only got a few months to live. His treatment has been postponed because of COVID-19. And he feels that some of the little that remains of his life is being stolen from him. Being cooped up in the house with his son has also made him a bit tetchy at times, and that really upsets him. He desperately wants his little boy to have happy memories of him in the future when he's no longer there. Just one of a multitude of extra burdens that the virus has laid on so many, but especially the weak and the vulnerable. Yet in these frightening times with this invisible enemy around us, Jesus is with us, especially with the weak and the vulnerable. He knows our suffering and our fear. And when I feel anxious, I remember some words of St. Teresa of Avila, who's one of my favourites. She was alive in the 16th century and she said, it's not possible to fall out of the eternal arms of God, only into them. It's not possible to fall out of the eternal arms of God, only into them. Amen.